Hello everyone and uh, welcome to uh, another follow-up tutorial on the terrain texturing series. Now first of all I want to apologize for the delay from my last tutorial. It's It's been quite a while so uh, hopefully uh, you're still there and uh, you uh, find this useful. So what I'm going to be uh, doing in this one, this is something that has been requested by, uh, by some of you, is a uh, um, simple way to do a distance blend on uh, uh, um, well, distance tiling on on this uh, on these terrain layers because as you can see, you know they're like kind of um, not so pretty to look at. So uh, that's going to be pretty easy. This is probably the easiest way that I could um, uh, figure out how to do, and uh, it's we're going to be using a, what is called a distance blend node. And uh, let's take a look at it. Well, uh, the, the layer that I'm going to be doing, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to be doing one because you know the other ones is just uh, kind of rinse and repeat type thing. So I'm going to be doing um, this um, uh, kind of muddy terrain because you know it's a little bit more uh, obvious. And I think uh, I mean the other one is too, but uh, I kind of like this one. So let's take a look at that material function, and uh, and here it is. So what we're going to need for this is first of all. I'm going to be uh, adding a distance, distance blend, if I can spell, blend node. This one has a couple of inputs, and uh, while to me initially they were a little bit, uh, you know, not the, the most uh, easy to understand, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at them. Well, the blend range can be viewed as a falloff value, if you think of the the brush when you paint the terrain, the kind of the edges are feathered out, you know, they're like, you know, they get softer and softer. So um, let's promote this to a parameter and um, just to differentiate between all of them, I'm going to be calling this uh, distance blend range. And uh, let's uh, start by setting this off to a value of 4000, at least the default values work best for me. And then the start offset, let's promote that to a parameter. And uh, again, just I'm going to call this distance start offset. Okay, so now that we have this in place, what we're going to need to do is we're going to have a separate set of nodes, just like identical to these, but with a different tiling. And with the help of this, we'll be able to lerp between them depending on these two values. So first of all, let's let's do this let's uh, duplicate these nodes so uh, control W and uh, oh, I'm gonna have to undo let's do control copy control W is not the uh, prettiest to use now uh, one thing to note is as you can see whenever you duplicate these inputs they're gonna have a different um, it's going to be a completely different input so uh, we need to use the existing ones so I'm going to be using so you know they, we, we carry uh, over the same color now you can change it to something else but uh, I just want to keep things simple so um, that's uh, going to be removing the tint then we have the roughness in here I mean this is the power along with the, the multiply delete that as well and then the normal intensity let's plug that in also so like I mentioned we're going to be basically just copying the landscape coordinates and the multiply and in here we're going to be adding a value just holding down S and clicking and this one's going to be called distance maybe UVs and we'll start this, let's start it at something uh, very low, kind of low, so I'll do a 0 0.02 for a default. All right, let's plug these into our UVs, just like so. And now, we need to link all these up together. And like I said, we're going to be using some LERP nodes, so linear interpolate. And our distance blend is going to go into the alpha, so we'll go, we're going to need three of these. Uh, base, normal, and roughness. I'm not going to be worrying about tessellation. And uh, there we go. So alpha and alpha. All right. First of all, we're going to need the base color. So the base of our close-up and the base of our distance. Then we're going to need 
roughness. So we have the roughness of our closest and the distance. And then the same for normal. Closest and distance. Let's plug these into our material attributes. Make a little bit more room in here, just like that. Perfect. Uh, it's not that much spaghetti. Let's go ahead and save this. There's going to be some shaders that are going to need to compile. There we go. It's almost there. So as you can see, this one is already working. Um, the blending is, is much more smoother. And let's take a look at, um, at some of the values that we've added. So as you, if you remember, I'm going to be, I'm going to try and see if I can like dock this somewhere. Though this one's a window, so it's going to be impossible. Just going to try and keep it somewhere around here and play around with some of the values. And uh, so we call these distance. So one, one of the things that I wanted to show you is these two parameters. These are kind of the m most important, of course, with the distance UVs. But um, I guess I, by mistake, I didn't set any value to this. Uh, one thing that worked for me was uh, about a thousand. So let's call it, let's put that out a thousand. And um, so I mentioned this kind of works as a fall off. So if we set this to zero, and let's see. Oh, one thing that I forgot to add, uh, my apologies, is in our wet sand, it's, this works in kind of a weird fashion because it, it, you have to have a negative value. So I'm going to be using an, a one minus to kind of flip that around. And uh, let's just add this as a default of a thousand. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And uh, again, there's going to be some shaders that my uh, old rig is loving to do. Okay, so there we go. So as I was mentioning, when the fall off is zero, you can see this harsh line that. Uh, does the transition between and the, the, the closer to the distance as you can see you know the um, we were able to set this to how far away the effect is being applied and uh, like I said a thousand uh, kind of works for me but uh, you need to adjust your fall off so um, 4,000 I think works pretty well because you know, once you once you step away, you know, once you move into the distance, um, it um, it does a pretty good transition. So so there we go. And um, and again, you can adjust the uh, how far you want this to. I mean, how far away from it uh, the camera should be before the effect starts happening. And um, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred should work pretty well. At least in, in my case, I think they do, because you know, once you get this close, you start to notice a little bit of tiling, but you really have to. Uh, I mean, the the texture has to be really ha ha have an obvious kind of thing that pattern that makes it uh, look really tileable. So, um, so yeah, there we go. That was uh, a little bit of a. Uh, short addition to my previous videos and uh, I'm going to be doing another one shortly on how to paint vegetation based on the layer so basically you're painting this mud and I want to have maybe some some grass or some some other assets that are being painted along with it but that's going to be it for this video uh, thank you guys so much for uh, stopping by hopefully it was helpful and we'll see you on the next one bye